Hey fellow reading warriors and welcome to a spooky book recommendation video. So in this video I'm going to recommend some spooky books for you to read this Halloween season as Halloween is getting closer and closer as the day of I'm filming this it is one week to Halloween and I'm just trying to nail down all the books that I want to read. Um, but I do have some books that I really want to talk about that are very in tune to spooky season that I think you guys should definitely read if you have the time and space on your TBRs. So, let's get started. Quick side note, um, not most of these books are not actually going to be thriller or horror just because that's not really a genre that I enjoy too much. I am hoping to still read some this spooky season, but they're not books that I have read in the past, so I don't have many recommendations if I haven't read them. Uh, so hopefully next year I'll have some recommendations in, the ter in terms of spooky and thriller, um, as hopefully I'll be reading those this year. So the first book I would like to talk to you guys about is one I read last year, and that is House of Salt and Sorrow by Aaron, Aaron A. Craig. And I absolutely love this book. It is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling, but with a huge horror twist. So it's about this family with 12 girls who live kind of like on an island and so it kind of has like that nautical like stormy weather kind of vibe in the background so it's like dark and gloomy in the background of these sisters keep dying under mysterious circumstances but everyone just always kind of brushes it under the rug until one sister is like no I'm gonna figure out what's going on why my sisters are dying because I don't want to be next and so she kind of goes on this mystery to solve of why all of her siblings are dying and there's a huge like super spooky twist at the end like I got halfway through the book and then I just never put it down and I stayed up super late reading it which was great but also horrible because it was such a spooky ending that I was like oh my word can I even sleep now but it was also amazing because it's not like it was gonna stop like I needed to finish this book no matter how tired I was and like I wasn't tired at all I was like oh I need to read this book so I highly recommend this one if you are into retellings, nautical themed, or just need something with a spooky twist, as well as a bunch of murders. So, highly recommend this one. Next, I'm going to recommend Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the first in, I believe there are four books kind of in the series, and I actually just ordered the second one, um, Hunting Prince Dracula, and I actually think it is sitting in a package on my table right there in front of me. I think it's in that package um, because I absolutely loved this book. Again, I read it last year and it takes place like in ancient London during Jack the Ripper times. It's about this woman who wants to like look at dead bodies and do the job that I'm blanking on. It's like a mortician or like, you know, something more along those lines. Like uh, the people who examine dead bodies figure out cause of death, like very science heavy. But because she's a woman in old England, people are like, no. Except for her uncle, who was like, hey, yeah, I do that. You can help me. You can join me. And so she ends up working on the Jack the Ripper case and trying to figure out what exactly is happening to all these women from the murders of Jack the Ripper. I, I kind of felt like I had deja vu when I read this, but that was impossible considering I had never read it before. But like... It was, it was good. I liked the character. The cool thing about this book is that there were like little pieces of mixed media in here. And, like, like it's not a mixed media book, but like it would have letters or it had um, pictures or like it'll have like some of these dark gruesome pictures in it. So if it's something, so if gore and gruesomeness is not necessarily something you want to read, is not something you want to see and that's why you read, uh, maybe just beware that some of those are in here um but yeah i i really enjoyed this book uh i would just say if you have some issues with dark books be beware but i didn't find it to be super dark it was really nice again i kind of just sat down and like read through it all within the span of like 24 hours because i had class and so it was like it was a pretty easy read to get through and i enjoyed it oh uh, the next one that i have on the list here is pure mystery i believe it's set in fall but it, not necessarily um it's just kind of a mystery that i read this past summer it's called the killing woods by lucy christopher and this is about a girl who 
whose father actually comes into the house after one stormy night with a dead girl in his arms. And because of that, and he's also a veteran and he suffers from very horrible PTSD. So just keep that in mind that that is a topic that's talked about in this book. So if that causes triggers for you, maybe don't. But if you're okay, I would really recommend this because it just kind of talks about how everyone thinks her father was the one that killed the girl, but she knows that he didn't do it. Just because he found her doesn't mean he killed her. And just because he has horrible PTSD doesn't mean he did something as horrible as kill her. So she kind of goes off to figure out what happened to this girl from her school and who killed her and why. So it's just a good, pure mystery. Uh, I, I enjoyed it for its mysteriousness and its like representation, but one thing that did get me was the romance subplots in this book drove me nuts because it was very like, Oh, I don't like him. Oh, I like him. But now are we a thing? I can't be a thing because he's the boyfriend of the dead girl. Like, it was just very dramatic when the rest of the book was trying to be, like, serious and actually good. Uh, but this romance was not very... I was not attached to it at all and I just didn't care for it. Um, but other than that, I think this was a really fun mystery to read and especially in spooky season. And I mean, it's the killing woods. Everyone knows not to go into the woods this time of year, and yet everyone does it anyway, so that's just one way that I am going to live out some Halloween spooky activities that I wish I could be doing this season, but I am not because quarantine and school. <laughs> um, so I have one more series to recommend. Well, I have multiple series to recommend, but I have one more physical book here in front of me. This series is a little bit older, and I talk about it all the time. Um, but if you have not yet read it, I would highly recommend Sabrielle by Garth Nix. Um, this is the first book in the Amporsen trilogy. The rest of the trilogy is right here. This book, it takes place in a fantasy world where there is magic. And this girl, she is the daughter of the Abhorsen. And the Abhorsen is the guy that has a bunch of bells. And he uses these bells to either help people move through um, death or help creatures that come out of death go back in. And the idea is that there are nine gates in between being dead and permanently going into death. There are nine gates in between that. So it's like you pass through the first gate, that means you're dead, but you still have the ability to go back into the living world. And the, really you need the bells to help you with that. And so the Apporson is in charge of the bells and making sure that those who die can get through the nine gates, but those who are supposed to stay dead, stay in the nine gates. So her father goes missing and Sabrielle takes it upon herself to figure out what happens to him. And through that, she learns the art of being the Abhorsen, AKA a necromancer. Basically, there's a lot of necromancy in here. Um, and like dead creatures, not necessarily people, but creatures coming back from the land of the dead, I guess. They don't really call it that, but like from past the night gate. Um, and so I love this book. My brother, who is not a big reader, loved this book. My husband, who is very picky about what books he reads, loved this series. So if, I, I say it's the perfect series for Halloween because it has necromancy and the magic system is so interesting. Um, and it's also just super good. So it is a bit of an older book, but if you haven't read it, seriously, pick it up because oh, I love, I love the magic system and the necromancy and the nine gates because each gate is different and oh, it's just so cool. I could go on talking about it for such a long time, but I shouldn't because I'm trying to keep this video like not a billion years long. So the next series that I'm going to suggest is one that I've heard some people really love, myself included, and one I've heard some people not like it all. Um, so that is the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. And I absolutely loved this series. I thought it fit the, the fall vibe very well. And in the first book, which is the only book I've read, but I'm going to read more, um, there's a murder. And so that's where it kind of gets into Halloween spooky vibes, as well as the fact that, so really what the book is about or the series is about is it's the idea that kids go through these doorways into magical worlds. Some worlds are um, characterized as good, some worlds are just kind of wacky, some worlds are dark and kind of mysterious or even evil, but 
you know, the, ch the children generally become very attached to this world. And so sometimes they have a really hard time adjusting back to the real, wor the real world. And so that is why they are sent to this school. And it's at the school where a murder takes place shortly after a new girl comes back from her world and has to go to this school. So everyone's trying to figure out who did it and why. And it's, you've got this, like, it's got this feeling of something is just consistently off. Because I don't know if it's because of like the different worlds that are described, like some are very whimsical, the one that she came from is like super dark. But there's just this constant feeling of something being off in the book and I love that. It was amazing and that's what makes it, that combined with the whole fact that there's a murder, really is what makes it great for spooky season and it's a series that I'm going to continue to read as we progress through fall, even though it doesn't feel like fall very much right now considering it's been snowing for like the past week. Like there is snow on the ground. So it doesn't really feel like fall much anymore, but you know, it's gonna be fall until December. So I'm trying to stay in those fall vibes. Um, so it's a great series to read around the spooky season, but then throughout the rest of fall as well. The next book that I'm recommending is one that I read earlier this year and the sequel just came out decently recently. Yep, decently recently. Um, <laughs> and I've not yet read it, but I really want to, and that is Serpent and Dove, and then the sequel, Blood and Honey. So I've only read Serpent and Dove, and I love it. It's about this woman who is a witch, and she is forced to get married to a witch hunter. And the witch hunters are like very religious, kind of belong to like the Catholic Church-esque. I don't know if it's specifically the Catholic Church or if it just reminds me a lot of Catholics. <laughs> um, but basically he doesn't know that she's a witch, but she knows that he's a witch hunter and they get married right at the beginning of the book. And that was something I loved about it because it was a forced marriage and well, like what happens after that, like so many books that are based on romance is all about leading up to marriage or finding someone to love. And here the author just kind of flipped it around and was like, okay, they're married, this is what happens. And so I really appreciated that. But then also, you know, witches, I mean, come on, Halloween. So I'm not gonna say too much more about the book just because the book was just flat out, I loved it so much and I don't want to spoil too much of it other than just that generic premise. So moving on to the last book that I have to recommend in this video, it's one that I recently finished this fall season and it's called Paula Santiago and the River of Tears. I loved this book because it is based off of Mexican mythology and like there's a little blurb on it that was like Rick Roared and like I don't know if he like supported the book or helped in like editing or publishing the book, but it, it it's very much like the Rick Riordan series of how, you know, he wrote about Greek mythology, Roman mythology, Norse mythology, Egyptian, blah, 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 blah. But he didn't write Mexican mythology, but then this author did. And it was so beautiful. It's about this little girl named Paula who whose mother is super superstitious. Um, and believes in all of the myths and the fantasy and the traditions of Mexican culture and she's always warning Paola like be careful don't go by the river or La Llorona is going to get you. Um, La Llorona is the woman who drowned her own children and then died of drowning and now every year pulls in children to drown into the river in her screaming sorrows. Um, but Paolo is extremely scientific. She has a very beautiful smart scientific mind who refuses to believe in these myths that her mother tells her. Um, and there's even a little bit of a critique of how Hispanic and Latinx people are viewed in the eyes of the law because Paola's friend goes missing around the river. And so Paola and her friend, they try to go to the cops and be like, hey, our friend is missing and they are mistreated horribly just because of um, their ethnicity and their heritage and it's really sad to see but then Paola decides that she's going to take it into her own hands and she's going to catch the guy who kidnapped her friend or she's going to figure out what happened to her friend. But obviously as I've been talking about Mexican mythology, La Llorona may or may not play a part in this book. I'm not going to say too much more because again I don't want to ruin it but it was just really nice to read a book about a mythology that hasn't been 
uh, expressed as much in popular culture, or at least here on book two. So I really want um, people to read it because it was a wonderfully written book, and I think if people read it, they're just gonna enjoy it. If you if you love mythology, if you love like fantastical storytelling, you should seriously read this book, and it is like just creepy enough for Halloween. That was the last book on my list. Those are all my recommendations of books that I've read in the past year or even in this past season that are kind of spooky Halloween vibes without going into horror or thriller. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any recommendations of books you've read that you really enjoy that either you want me to read or you want other people to read, comment down below letting me know what those are. I'm always looking for more spooky recommendations even though Halloween is so close. There's just so much I want to read, and it's most likely I'm still going to be in the Halloween spirit a couple days after Halloween, so there's, there, there's still plenty of time to read all these books. Um, if you like this video or you're going to read any of the books from it, please give it a thumbs up, like the video, share it to your friends who maybe you want them to start reading or there's a spooky book on here that you want them to read. Um, send them this video. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel and I will continue to post spooky videos here in spooky season, but then I'll also I'll go back to some regular videos. I'm trying to post at least once or twice a week, kind of at the end or beginning of weekends. I'm sorry that's not really a set schedule, but like school is just crazy right now, so I'll figure it out, I promise. Um, but subscribe so whenever I do post you get the notification, hit the bell so you can get all the notifications of whatever I do here on YouTube. And uh, I hope you guys have a spooky Halloween and happy reading!